Hi guys, this is Valerie Rupp with Elite Real Estate and I'm here with my wonderful partner, Kelly Ann. Hi guys. And we're also visiting with Radley Brooks with PRMI. How are you, Radley? Good, hey, thanks for having me on. You bet. We're just trying to touch base and talk hyper-local like Reno County and hyper-local really Hutchinson and kind okay. of see what the market's been like. Um, I know we tried to talk with you last week and I pulled the well, anyway, I'm learning <laughs> Zoom better, and so we're gonna go over a little bit of stuff that we talked about last week, and about yourself, and about your company, and how you got started, and what you're seeing in the market right now with all of the challenges that we've been having with the coronavirus. So yeah, tell us a little bit about um, your business, how you got started, kind of what, what you created. Sure. So I started about 14 years ago. Um, I got into the mortgage industry because I was very intrigued by the guy that did my mortgage. Uh, I, I, was, uh, I thought it was pretty neat that he was able to turn around and look at a lot of different loan programs. I thought it, he made it seem pretty simple. Um, and so finally, once, uh, once I thought, I think I'd like to get into real estate and, and Shirley Labine was kind of a big mentor for me and wanted me to get me you know, get me into that industry as well. So I, I tried it out and um, really loved it, loved being able to help people. And that's when I learned that everyone has a very unique situation, a very unique need. And so uh, as time went on, I tried to poise myself to where I would have um, the, you know, a smorgasbord of loan options. And so it's kind of nice that uh, now that we've grown, I feel like we've grown so much just because we do. We have over 50 different loan programs. Wow. Um, we do a lot of uh, government loans, a lot of FHA, VA, rural development. Um, you know, so it's just having the flexibility to do many different loan programs uh, at many different uh, credit score ranges and stuff too. So I, you know, again, like it that uh, we have a lot of a lot of different outlets in here in Hutchinson. Uh, again, we definitely have a wide range of clientele so. and your brokerage is a uh, prmi and is that a, a nationwide um kind of company yeah so primary residential mortgage our home office is actually out of salt lake city and um they've they're a privately held company and then we have multiple branches across the united states so it's it's pretty nice too because that's allowed us to turn around and do lending in other states such as texas oklahoma and florida uh, we're able to help even a lot of people here buy their second home in Arizona if they need help with that. So nice, wow. very nice. Yeah. Awesome. As far as who comes to a broker versus a lender, what can you teach us about some of that? Well, what I feel like is that a lot of times, even a local bank or credit union will actually refer a client over to us because they'll say, hey, you know what, we've got a couple of loan programs that they don't, the client doesn't meet um, some of the criteria we're looking for. So a lot of times they'll uh, they'll send them or refer them over to us and we'll look at it. And, and a lot of times we're able to find a solution that, uh, again, just uh, that works for them. And, and uh, we'll find, uh, again, I guess it, ways to get around some of the challenges that some people have so uh but yeah i mean we have quite a quite a range i think a lot of the real estate agents that um they realize too that we'll look at things and a lot of times we'll be able to make a loan work and if we're not it's nice because we have that relationship we might refer them on to another bank or credit union too so we do well, a lot that's of kind of uh, what i was going to say too is that we're really good you guys within our community between all the different banks and the credit unions and even yourself it's like you said, everybody has different requirements. And so you refer somebody over that maybe that they couldn't assist with. And that's the nice part about staying local versus jumping online and not knowing our market. Yeah, every every loan officer that's here in Hutchinson, I definitely know them. And every once in a while, we get a chance to collaborate too on what we're doing and what changes we're seeing. So it is really nice for us to be able to kind of refer people into um, maybe what's the best option for them. Uh, you know, even if it's something that I could do or another bank, we'll still make sure that what's best for the client, that we send them the right direction. Well, and, and that's the nice part about our community is we're just trying to help everybody. You know, it's not mm -hmm. a matter of, um, we're just trying to get the deal done. We really want to help and use it as yeah. that stepping stone to get into your first house and then maybe even to the next one. So we're just looking out because it's true neighbors. We always talk about, you know, you're, you're gonna run into them. And so you you have to end the deal positive because you don't want them to either one, you know, spread bad, you know, that you did a bad job for them or 
you don't want them to chase you down in the grocery store. So it's like we're we're small enough that we're forced to, you know, you're you're going to see these people. So do do them right. Right. Yeah, so, I was going to say the only thing that we really have of value is our reputation. So. Yes. Exactly. So, um, Radley, I know uh, something that we've seen in the last couple of years is the online lending, the online brokers. And I think what's enticing about that is the ease of being able to, you know, sit in your pajamas on your couch and kind of do everything. So I know you guys have um, got a lot of or you've started doing some stuff. What uh, what do you kind of have that competes with those sort of products? Sure, so we have what's called a click approval um, is what our product is called. And essentially what that does is somebody can apply online, they're gonna input their banking information, they're gonna input their employment information. And what's really cool about it is in about 45 minutes after they submit the application, it's gonna go out and pull their bank statements, it's gonna pull the verifications of employment, and it's gonna run it all through an engine so then that way it makes the process way smoother for the client they don't have to go and provide a lot of that documentation for us. Uh, it makes it quick, it makes it easy. Uh, it's definitely changed a lot these last couple of years since we've implemented and that's been the, the responses that the clients have told us is that, wow, that's a lot easier than the last time I bought a house. And, uh, you know, we're, again, we, we're trying to find a way to streamline that process. And then, you know, we still run into people that say, hey, you know what? I, I, I did the application, but I still want to come in and I want to see you face to face. I, I'd like to be able to work on, on bringing these other documents to you that I don't feel comfortable uploading and stuff. So, so we kind of have a slogan around here that says, you know, you can click call or come in. So we, right. we, we kind of let everybody, whatever works best for them, which is again, kind of nice about being local, but if they want the ease and the convenience of applying online or, or using our app, uh, they can do that too. Well, that's that's awesome. the nice part, especially with the the amount of seniors that we have in the community. We're always trying to customize it for them because a lot of them aren't tech savvy or they don't trust putting things out there like you're saying. So that's that's great that it makes it um, something easy for them to be able to even jump on and do or come in and see you. So. I think another thing I love about your office is it's we always like joke, you know, it's we're always for closing. It's like waiting on the underwriters. And I think as realtors, we never see these underwriters. So we feel like it's like <laughs> this like, little like factory with like little trolls in it that, you know, that that you guys use as an excuse. But the awesome thing I love is your underwriters are literally like down the hall. Yeah, we're one of the few lenders that has everything all in our building. So we have processors that are all here in our building. We have our underwriters that are here. So yeah, I've had people reference and underwriters like the wizard behind the curtain that nobody yeah. gets to see and stuff. And so, uh, but uh, but yeah, no, it is nice. I mean, sometimes there's just that uh, that urgent um, that urgent deal of something happened, and you need a quick answer. So yeah, we can go right down the hall and uh, review a file with our underwriter, and they can advise us of oh, yeah that works or no that doesn't, or even better yet. What I love about my underwriters is that they're really good at solutions. So they'll say, hey, that doesn't work for this program, but you may want to look at this one because I think they'll be fine uh, going with um, Freddie Mac versus Fannie Mae. So which again is something that I will tell you that um, separates us uh, from most other lenders is that we do use um, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae both. So we don't, because uh, one, one entity, we may be able to get a loan approved and the other one doesn't. So. Uh, we do have the option to write loans under both guidelines. We see a lot when people start looking and they're, especially right now, there's a ton of people out there looking because they have time on their hands and that's fabulous. Restrictions right now with the coronavirus have made it so that you have to be pre-approved ahead of time and that you don't have something else to sell in order to sell that and then jump into something else. You need to have all that under contract already. Um, and it's been challenging because there's lots of people that want to go right out and see stuff but we find in in general that it's don't you think Kelly? it's probably 18 months to a year before they start you know they're just starting to kick the tires um what do you have for suggestions for those buyers that are out there about getting pre-approved or if they have challenged credit what should they be doing yeah well, kind of like the, time, the timeline yeah so i usually tell everybody that if you can start the application process a year in advance before you're actually looking to buy that's the best because 
if you do have some credit challenges, some of them, some of them can be resolved, um, you know, within a few months. But I think more beyond that is just being able to sit down and go through a budget and a plan on what will, where they'll be comfortable. Because sometimes people may have a car they want to be able to pay off before they get into that debt of that house. Right. Um, but the other thing that I think is important is there's other loan programs such as Interfaith Housing's uh, first time home buyer program. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of people that are interested in, in that, but the problem is is that they find a house first and then they mm -hmm. get approved and then they find out that program takes six months to go through it. So if I can catch somebody early enough on uh, in the process, then I can make that introduction to Interfaith Housing and help them get some of that free money that they can get the, of the matching program. So it's a great program and uh, and it's a great course. And so I, I usually recommend it to everybody that has enough time to complete the program. Well, and we did a class on that back, what was it in February? Mm -hmm. Just talking about all those different resources that people don't know about. Um, it is for first time home buyers for the different grants that are out there, but um, you can get $5,000 from that. And then if you go through, like you said, through Interfaith Housing, that's another possibility of having $6,000. But there, like you said, there's different steps that you have to do. Um, and then there's the local neighborhood grants that are even out there. The Hutchinson, uh, the, the community specific one yes. where, yeah, yep. where there's certain neighborhoods within, uh, yeah, I've got somebody right now in the college, is it College Hill area? Yes. That's currently looking college right College, College Grove, Grove yeah. yes. Well, and I have a couple different ones that are getting that grant, and then they're also getting the Interfaith Housing Grant, too. So um, there's just some nice programs that if you haven't owned a house in like the last three years and you would qualify for these, it would be, you know, just that much sweeter <laughs> to get yeah. into. And I know, um, I know something else that we always try and um, push, and I think it helps uh, working with your lender is people don't realize how much our taxes are in Reno County. And so you need to, you need to find a price that, uh, you know, that you'll pay every month that you're comfortable with. And I think that's where you, know, you lenders really help with that because, okay, you may qualify for so much, but you really need to work in all of those other additional costs. So you're not house poor and you know, you're making the right decision. Yeah. And speaking of online, I think a lot of buyers will look at the online calculators too. And so they, they, a lot of the calculators don't include those taxes and insurance. So it is great to get, cause I've had numerous, it happens to us all the time where somebody thinks that, that that thousand dollar monthly payment is, is all it's going to be for this $250,000 home. So, and I'm a big proponent of go in, get pre-approved ahead of time. So you're not disappointed when you go out there and start looking and we're looking at something way out of your price range. And then you find out, whoa, you have to pull the reins back and go to something. It's hard to go backwards in those price ranges. And I also am a big proponent of, okay, they're going to tell you that maybe you qualify for a $400,000 house, but the house payment you want with everything escrowed in your taxes and insurance and everything, um, is way out of your comfort zone for that 400,000. Tell them where you want to be and then they will tell you what kind of price range to stay under. Yeah, because it's a big shock. Job. Yeah, because it's a big shock also too, if you go from looking at 400 to, to $150,000, <laughs> oh, that's what oh, you man. wanna, yeah, it's a little hard to go backwards, so. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So, so with everything, so. Yeah, with everything going on, um, you know, this is why we're doing a Zoom meeting because of Corona. Um, how are how are you seeing things change? How are you accommodating? Well, this is the first time I've had the last couple of weeks where my calendar is either full of uh, Zoom meetings or uh, FaceTime. That kind of seems to be the the primary two and stuff. I uh, I know other people are using other forms of. Uh, a video conferencing, but it's usually Zoom and FaceTime that I've got my calendar full of with clients. So uh, that's kind of what we do is we do a lot of the Zoom FaceTime meetings with clients for pre-approvals, uh, even to talk about the status of their loan where they're currently at. Uh, and you know, so far people are adapting to the technology pretty quickly. Good. All of our disclosures that we do, our loan documents, they're e-signable. We've been doing that for a couple of years, just like you guys. So, uh, you know, it was nice that we already have that, uh, that that technology in place and and so and as time's gone on uh through this coronavirus i've had staff that's kind of been displaced from their to their homes and uh 
you know, so everyone's kind of working remotely, but we're all kind of working together and we can use this technology to meet um, in the mornings or in the afternoon and go through our pipelines. I think right. that's, and there's, that's just yeah, huge. been rumors, rumors of like uh, restrictions that have been added as far as like, um, you know, minimum credit scores. Have you, have you seen any of that impacting? Yes. Um, once, you know, once the, um, the, the topic of furloughing came out and we're starting to see these unemployment numbers that are at all time high. Um, it is making the mortgage servicers across the board getting pretty nervous about loans and the lower credit scores. So we have seen a spike um, currently for what the credit score requirements are on a lot of our government loans. Uh, I think that we're gonna see that for a little while until we see the unemployment kind of get, um, you know, once we see employment start to correct and the economy start to stabilize again, then I think that we'll look at lowering those credit scores back down. But yeah, we definitely saw almost an overnight change with credit requirements. And, and it was usually, you said you could help with somebody like a 620 or lower, but it jumped all the way up to like a 680. Is that still the same this week? That is, that is. now we're still doing some conventional loans down to the 620. Um, there's a recent bill that was just passed for a pass-through assistance program that that they, the government is now realizing that we need to put a backstop in place for these mortgage servicers. So uh, a lot of people didn't realize that when they talked about in forbearances, uh, people putting their mortgage in forbearance, those mortgage servicers were still having to pass that principal and interest payment on to the investor. But when there is no payment being made, it was going to put them in a huge bind, uh, possibly to put them out of business. So. Now that the governments came and said, hey, on these government loans, we're gonna look at backstopping that and helping assist you uh, with those loans that are put into forbearance, uh, that is where, again, we're hoping that uh, the servicers will start opening back up again and allowing for government loans. But yeah, I think, again, we're just gonna have to watch it. Um, I know that unemployment came out again uh, today. The numbers were, uh, again, another Huge. over six and a half. I think it was what 6.6 .6 million wow. again. Um, and uh, last week they revised the 6.6 .6 to 6.8 million. So wow. yeah, lot the week prior. So, uh, so yeah, so I think once we start seeing those things stabilize, um, then we'll probably start seeing the credit scores loosen up again. But for right now, I think everyone's playing it ultra cautious. So. Do you tell anybody that's sitting out there with a, a credit score that's under 680, what should they be doing at this time? I mean, can they still just be looking online or? Yeah, so so there's a couple of things that if some people are only, you know, 20 or 30 points off, we have a program which is called as a, a rapid rescore. So if somebody, we look at it, we can say, hey, it looks like you just have a couple of credit cards that need to be paid down. And we have a program that will actually tell us you should get 25, 30 points just from paying nice. down this Capital One. So if we run them through that model, which all of my team knows how to do, uh, then we're able to say, hey, you know what? Give us three to four days, pay that down. Uh, we'll be able to get you a new credit report and you don't have to wait the full 30 days. So if somebody really has found the house first before they got pre-approved, uh, we're doing a rapid rescore. Otherwise, uh, if it takes more work than that, yeah, we're going to map out a full plan of what they need to do and roughly the time frame it takes to get their credit in line. I think that's, awesome. that's the key right there is to be working on it during this time if it's not quite ready and then you'll be set and ready to go because there's a lot of houses coming out right now, mm -hmm. but they're going very fast. So you have to be you know, ready to go. You can't wait until um, you find the house and then go look for credit because they're not waiting for that. They want to know that you're pre-approved and ready to go. So. Um, I think yeah. that's the vital part of it. Well, um, before we jump off, uh, just was wondering, you know, what did interest rates look like today? So interest rates are still, I will say that they're kind of leveling off. I mean, you know, we were seeing this up and down of rates and uh, then, then all of a sudden we saw them nosedive, um, especially when the government said that they were going to start in, infusing cash to buy mortgage-backed securities. They were artificially kind of, I say, lowering the rates. They have kind of, they're still buying mortgage-backed securities, but they're not buying them at the uh, the abundance that they were initially. So we're still seeing 30-year fixed rates in the low threes. We're seeing 15-year rates in the in the twos. Uh, rates are at an all-time low, and that's kind of what I've been telling everybody is that you know if you feel like you've got stable employment, 
take advantage of this situation. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is kind of a once in a lifetime. I mean, I know I've only been doing this for 14 years, but I've never seen rates this low before. And uh, this is a great time. If you're in the market to buy a house and you're you're thinking about it, I, I'm telling everybody, this is, this is the time to do it. Yeah. Well, and you were doing like in the last month or so here, like several, like, refinancing you know the, the okay. refinance is huge right now are you still seeing that yeah almost 70 percent of all the loans we're doing oh, right wow. now are refinances so it's uh uh the re you know that's the thing is that uh we've been doing mortgages for so long that we've seen rates come down out of the fives and into the fours and it's really exciting to kind of see the number of people that are converting their 30-year mortgage into those 15-year mortgage and yep. When you kind of show them, hey, you've been in your loan for three years and you've still got $120,000 in interest, but if I convert you to the 15, you're at $38,000 of interest if I convert it right now. So people are, uh, you know, hadn't really thought about, you know, that. So maybe we're not lowering the payment for them, but it's just a slightly higher payment than what they were currently making, but they're going to have that uh, paid off at least 12, 13, or 14 years sooner yes. uh, than what they initially thought they were. That's awesome. That's that's awesome. Well, we'll just keep touching base with you. Um, just kind of making sure that we're staying on track and helping people here and educate them on what we can do locally. But we really appreciate you. You do a lot for the community and not even just with loans. You do a very good job with everything, helping them, all your outreach that you guys do. Thank you. Yeah, I um, would be happy to do uh, more meetings with you guys. Uh, right now, this financial industry is very fluid. Uh, Things are changing every couple of days now, and that's usually that hasn't been the case. Sometimes we would see guideline changes once, uh, you know, once every three months, and now we're seeing them change every two to three days. So yeah, I'll be happy to come back on here and update you guys again with some of the things that are, are changing. Well, that's what we're hoping. Well, thank you, Radley, and stay safe, and uh, let us know if you need anything. Happy uh, Passover, and hope you hopefully you guys have a great weekend. You too. Have a good one. Bye. 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 -bye.